So today I'm going to talk a little bit about how to use a scale to accurately gauge your progress while at the same time not getting too overly involved with those numbers. Now, I'd like to first start by thanking everyone for the tremendous support that we've had so far for this channel and do know that I'm going to be consistently making new content so do be sure to like the videos it's really important it does make a difference and also subscribe so you'll be first to hear any of the new content that I have coming out so on to today's topic which is how do you use a scale in a way that's healthy now I'm going to start with a bit of a caveat I do not recommend that people use a scale on a daily basis I don't even think you should probably use it more than once a week, if at all, unless you are a competitive athlete getting ready for a bodybuilding competition or some type of event that requires uh, a body weight cutoff. Other than that, I'm not really 100% behind the idea of using a scale daily to track your progress. But at the same time, there is the importance of what I consider harm reduction. I could sit here and say, you shouldn't use the scale. You should just use the mirror, just use how you feel. And that is true. And that is really and truly what I think ideally you should be doing. But I also understand that I have to be realistic and I have to make sure that my message is one that not only appeals to everyone, but also addresses where everyone is. For some people, a scale can be a very important gauge of where they are. And it's important to address that. It's also important to address that someone's not going to go from weighing themselves every single day to just suddenly not weighing themselves anymore or uh, attaching certain feelings, certain numbers from that scale. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can use a scale in a safe and effective way that will be helpful to you, but will also not necessarily bring down your self-image, not make you feel miserable. So we're going to start by talking about what a scale can do and what a scale can't do. First and foremost, a scale can tell you how much you weigh. We all know that's pretty obvious. The problem is how much you weigh isn't necessarily the most accurate way of gauging and benchmarking your progress. Now, if you're trying to lose weight and you're lifting weights, for example, you're lifting weights, so you're building muscle. At the same time, you're also losing body fat. A scale can give you an accurate reading as to how much physical pounds or kilograms that you may have lost over time, but it's not going to tell you much about your body composition. In that, for example, very often with my clients, I'll have clients typically lose five to six pounds within their first four to six weeks of initially starting training with me. That's more or less what most people will see. It doesn't mean that they lost six pounds of fat, not what happened. It only means that their weight changed by six pounds. Now, during that period of time, especially if it's a situation where they're just getting started with any kind of weight training or resistance training, there is going to be an increase in muscle mass. A scale can't detect what's muscle mass increase and what's body fat decrease. It can only detect what your overall difference in body weight can be. So keep that in mind. What I tell people to do if they are using a scale is to use it in conjunction with 
how your clothes fit. I don't like measuring tapes, and you can probably tell that I'm not really big on the whole measuring thing because I think it's important for a sustainable fitness lifestyle that you focus more on process more than those numbers because those numbers can really get you down sometimes. But focus on your clothing. Focus on how your clothing fit, especially around the waist. If you get to a point where you start seeing the numbers on the scale slightly moving up, slightly moving up, but you feel around your waist that things are a little bit looser. That's not a sign that you need to do anything radical with your diet. It could be a sign, always could, that you're gaining muscle mass while losing body fat. Now, most of us hold a lot of body fat in our center areas. And so it makes sense. And what is typically seen with my clients and what I usually see with people that I work with in general is that you can build muscle while watching your clothing sizes go down and the numbers on the scale going up. So just because the numbers on the scale go up doesn't necessarily mean that something is tragically wrong and you need to, you know, feel horrible or give up or become frustrated. That's not how it works. There can also be a lot of very major events that can happen over the course of a day that can change those weights. It's important also to remember that your body weight can fluctuate tremendously over the course of the day. As you eat, your body retains more and more fluid. So you tend to find the combination of the solid food that you're eating and the fluid retention that you're gonna have naturally over the course of a day is gonna make it such that your weight first thing in the morning is not gonna be your body weight last thing at the end of the day or even the middle of the day. Most people will talk about how fantastic they look first thing in the morning. It's always that first thing in the morning photograph people like to post on, on Instagram. And then they talk about how bloated they feel later on in the day. There's nothing wrong with that. If the scale numbers go up over the course of a day, there's nothing wrong with that. It's totally natural. I, for example, I start my day at or around 205 to 203 pounds. That's my weight fluctuations, more or less. I can end the day sometimes weighing as much as 208 to 209 pounds. I don't get upset. I don't get worried. It's supposed to be that way. Now, normally, my weight fluctuations is only about three, four pounds. I eat a lot of food and the combination of the food and the fluid I take in, I drink anywhere from a gallon and a half to sometimes almost two gallons of water a day, depending on my activity levels. So I should expect to see an increase in my body weight over time, over the course of a day. And while mine might not be a typical example, everyone is going to expect, should expect to see that change. So if you're weighing yourself and you're accustomed to being a certain weight and you weigh yourself at the end of the day and you find yourself that you're a little heavier than you think you should be, don't think that that's an accurate measurement. It has to be first thing in the morning before breakfast and always weigh yourself at the same time before breakfast, before eating anything first thing in the morning. That's the only way you're going to have any kind of accuracy in gauging any progress that you're making or it being more, more accurately. What are the gauges of the progress that you're making? The other consideration that you have to really bear in mind is that I mentioned water retention. Water retention can be tremendously drastic in terms of how it affects those numbers on the scale. If you, like me, follow a predominantly lowered sodium intake on a regular basis, 
and you have or encounter a food that's really high in sodium, you could find your body retaining a lot of extracellular fluid as a result. Now, how much water you hold as a result of your sodium intake depends on how much sodium you take in, depends on how much sodium you're not used to taking in. It depends on how long a period you were taking in that, that sodium. For example, when I travel, I don't always have 100% control over my meals. I don't cook everything when I'm traveling. Sometimes I have to eat out. And when I'm eating out, I'm gonna be eating foods that are a lot more, that are a lot higher in sodium than what I'm used to with the meals that I cook for myself. As a result, the numbers on the scale go up slightly. It's not the end of the world. When I get back home and I go back to eating my regular meals, those numbers go right back down. It's just water retention. And a lot of the major fluctuations that you see in the numbers on the scale, it's just water retention. And a word of water about water retention. The more water you drink, the less water your body's going to hold on to. So if you're not drinking enough water, you might find the numbers on the scale going up because your body's holding on to as much water as it can because it's not getting an adequate supply. Give your body an adequate supply and it's going to say, hey, we have enough water coming in. We don't need to hold on to that much. So that's really, really important because I think when people talk about problems with seeing the numbers really jump on the scale, it's really a matter of water retention, not really anything to do with fat increases. Remember, it takes 3,500 calories for one pound of fat. That's a lot of calories. And you can't just magically add that excess to your body over the course of a day or two days. If the numbers on the scale jump up, it's almost certainly water retention. Now, menstrual changes in women can also bring about tremendous changes in the numbers on the scale. I once had a client who had a 12 pound difference that would happen every month like clockwork. She'd literally go up by 12 pounds, a tremendous amount. But for her, it was natural. Everyone has their natural changes based on the hormonal changes that come with menstrual cycles. That's something very, very real. It's not something that should get you down. It's just simply how your body works. Temperature change can also make the numbers on the scale change. If it's colder and the temperature goes up and you're sweating more, but your water intake stays the same, remember what I said, if you're not getting enough water, your body's gonna hold on to more fluids. So very often with the change in the season, sometimes when it starts getting warmer and you don't drink enough, people see the numbers on the scale going up and they wonder, well, what happened? My diet's the same. You're not drinking enough water. Always make sure you're drinking enough water because it's going to make sure that you're going to have some nice, steady numbers with regards to water retention. You're not going to hold that much water and you have a nice, more or less stable baseline to work with. Now, I'm going to end with something also very important about the numbers on the scale. Very often, people have a particular number in mind. That number could be when they look their best. That number could be an arbitrary number. But if they aren't at that number, they feel horrible about themselves. I'm going to hopefully help with a little bit of perspective. If you think about the worst thing that you ever did, the absolute worst thing that you've ever done in your life would you really want anybody else to define you by that one horrible thing that you did in your life i think the answer universally to that would be no and the same applies to the numbers on the scale those numbers cannot and should not represent how you feel about yourself and should not be the gauge that you use to judge your own self-worth I know it's hard, but it's something that you have to work on. And keep in mind that the numbers on a scale are akin to one gauge in an airplane. 
you have a pilot flying an airplane and you're looking at one particular gauge, that one gauge gives them some information, but doesn't give them the whole spectrum of information that's needed to fly an aircraft safely. You need more than just altitude. You need to know what the orientation of the aircraft is. You need airspeed. There is all these other factors that come into flying an aircraft safely, and there are all the other factors that come into how the numbers on the scale fall into how you are doing as far as your progress is concerned. A scale can't tell you, hey, remember you're lifting weights, so you may have put some muscle on. A scale can't tell you, hey, you didn't drink enough water yesterday and you had some salty food, so maybe you're holding more fluids. A scale can't tell you, hey, you've been eating really, really well. So any fluctuations could just be normal things that come with the weather or just simply how your body is. A scale can't do that. You have to do that. So make sure when those numbers talk to you, you talk back to those numbers. That's the best way to use it. And again, try not to use the scale every day because there can be so many fluctuations over a short period of time. You don't really get too much accuracy if you're weighing in every day, unless you're getting ready for a bodybuilding competition or something requires, like I said, a body weight check-in. So be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Don't define yourself by those numbers. And thanks so much for tuning in.